Now, as far as treatments go, we like to self-diagnose. I'm an internet doctor because I can look online. Mm -hmm. Not only are we not internet doctors that look and diagnose things, we're also not internet doctors to treat things. Uh, Dr. Phil, <laughs> spoiler alert, not real. Okay, uh, all the other things that we think, oh, I can do this on my own. Is that a good idea? I would caution people, and I know that teenagers can be very stubborn and very independent and think, I don't really need to go see someone. I've, I've got this. I've always been able to take care of things on my own. Um, but I would really caution anyone to try and be dealing with serious issues or struggles or whatever by themselves because we as humans are very social beings and we rely on each other for help. And so if you saw a friend that was struggling and you knew that they were having a hard time, would you not want to try and help them? So if you're the one that's struggling, let them help you. Let the people that you trust help you because you don't have to do this all on your own. And that is another great point is because we've been talking kind of from a student perspective. We've been talking about the adults that can be a help. But what if somebody in my friend group is somebody I'm concerned about. What part of that is my responsibility and what part of that is none of my business? That is a good point. I would say that if you're having concerns about your friend's health and or safety, first off, ask them. You know, your friend is the expert on them, not you, not me, not Mr. Moore or anybody else. So if you really care about your friend, ask them, hey, I've noticed that you've seemed a little short or a little different lately. What's going on? If that doesn't get you anywhere and like you can feel in your gut, first off, listen to your gut because it's right most of the time. So if you have a gut feeling about something, go for it. If you ask your friend and they say, no, I'm fine, you know, it's just a bad day or a bad week or whatever, and you know that it's more than that, then you could go to an adult that you trust, whether it's your parent, me, the principal, whomever, and then we can help facilitate that conversation from there. Well, and in part, it's not necessarily... Uh... You're not telling on them. You're not tattling on them. Right. The goal would be to give it to someone else who you are used to having this conversation with people. Mm -hmm. If I'm just a friend of my friend, that may not be the relationship that we have that, A, I don't have experience in that, and B, that may not be my area of expertise, but this is what you're trained to do. Right, and I have a lot of kids that say, well, I don't need to go to counseling because I have friends, or I don't need to go to counseling because I can talk to my mom. And I think that those are all wonderful resources, and keep talking to your friends and keep talking to your trusted adults. But like you mentioned, your friends aren't trained mental health professionals. They may struggle with knowing what to say and what to do if you bring this to them or they sense that something's going on because it's like they want to help, but they don't really know how. Same thing with your parents unless they're a trained mental health professional, they're not going to know exactly what to say or what to do. And I think that is really good advice, is get to the people that know what to do. And as a parent myself, this wouldn't be my speciality with my own children. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reach out maybe to that doctor that I take my kid to for his flu shot. That may be where I start. Mm -hmm. Maybe I do know someone who is a mental health professional, maybe I go there as a parent for my child, but I can tell you guys right now, as a parent, this is also not easy. So not only will you need the courage, if you're in this boat, to speak up, you're also gonna have to be a little patient with mom and dad, because this is probably outside their wheelhouse as well. Mm -hmm. And this is where the adults can get in the room and talk about helping each other in very adult ways. But the thing is, you will get to be a part of that conversation. Absolutely, and the, the patient, client, student, whatever, should be an important integral part of that conversation and that team that we talked about. Um, the other thing I want everyone to know is that, you know, these symptoms don't come on overnight, so you have to be patient with the process because in order for things to change, it takes time and effort to make things different if you want things to change. Well, it's, it's like everything else we do. If I wanted to bring down my mile time, or if I wanted to bring mm -hmm. up my max bench, or if I wanted to bring down my waistline, whatever that is, that is not something I'm gonna do in a day, right. or a week, or a month. 
It's a process mm -hmm. and it truly is a lifestyle. And I think that may be the other piece of this puzzle we need to talk about is a lot of things that are triggers for depression, a lot of things that are the results of depression are lifestyle issues. Kind of speak to that. I would say that, um, you know, depression, sometimes they equate it to we're holding on to things in the past that we kind of can't get over. So whether it's a biological thing that you're lacking a neurotransmitter in your brain, and that does happen genetically, we can pass these things down from parents to kids. Sometimes it could be from a period of life that's really rough or a traumatic event. So there's lots of different ways that this can come about, and there's lots of different ways to treat it too. Um, it's kind of whatever works for you, whether it's, and, and this is another thing kind of to sidebar that, but people want a quick fix. And so we think that if we throw a pill at it or we go to one counseling session, that that's really gonna be enough. And it's not, it takes a, a bit of time like I said, it took time for you to get where you're at, so it's going to take time to undo and, and learn more effective ways to deal with things. But the thing that we need to remember is depression is a very large topic, and it's not something you're going to be an expert in, or at least we certainly hope not, because what we'd like is you to live your best, most mental wellness life. And that's why we're talking about this, so that you have at least an idea of what should I do if this is me, who should I go see? And maybe a few of the things that will happen as that progresses, knowing that getting adults involved, getting a team around you and giving it time mm -hmm. is going to help the process. Okay, we'll pick it up in the next session. All right, thanks guys.